it's time for your motherfucking neighborhood Jesus, your motherfucking Chick <laughs> What's good guys, back at it again. Another uh, review, walk through, walk around of the car. Um, we got some new people on the channel. Seeing we've gotten, in the past month, probably gotten about 30 or 40 new subscribers. Um, I just thought, you know, for the new people, I would do a upgraded, updated, uh, you know, walk through of the car. Um, we have changed some things. We've got some new additions on the car. Um, so I guess let's get to it. I guess we'll start with the engine. It's where everything starts, right? Alright, so for any of you guys that uh, do not know the background of this car, this is a 04 RSX Type S. And uh, this isn't a K20A2, it's not a K20Z1, it is the DC5R K20A, 11.5 to 1 compression. Also has the uh, Type R Y2M3 transmission with LSD and the uh, 4.7 final drive. Only other things done to the transmission are. Uh, Exeti stage one clutch, pressure plate, and the lightweight eight pound flywheel. Uh, did the Speed Factory uh, detent springs. And then uh, we got the K-Tune CMC and slave cylinder and clutch hose. And then as far as uh, as far as bolt-ons go, we got the uh, we got the Groupium Ram Air System with the Tegawa intake elbow to make it work and we got skunk 2 74 millimeter throttle body and pro series manifold that is port matched to 74 um, skunk 2 alpha race header and uh, we used to have the veil side but uh, unfortunately it was pretty destroyed so now we have a uh, mega power RR full three inch exhaust I honestly like it it's not titanium but I think it'll get the job done then uh, obviously we've got some passport motor mounts with the uh, hyperflex bushings all the way around fuel system uh, we got obviously K tune rail regulator and this has been a full return style system. It's, these cars don't come with a uh, return style, they're returnless. So I built the uh, fuel system from scratch. We got Graham 750 CC injectors. We've got uh, Graham's 320 liter per hour pump. We've got the AMG fuel design dual pump hanger. Just running a single pump right now. Maybe we'll run a dual pump one day if I ever go turbo or something. <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, the uh, race header. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. This car is set up for, uh, it does have a uh, flex fuel sensor in the line, the return line, but I'm not using it right now because I don't have E85 readily available to me. We got Koyo Rad, Mishimoto fans, Speed Factory catch can. We've got m m Honda front strut tower bar, rear strut, and the C-pillar. And this car is uh, tuned on Honda Capra V4, tuned by Matt Shu. And it, uh, it made uh, 223 and 162, super respectable numbers. Pretty, pretty good solid number on the horsepower, but the, uh, the torque is really what impressed me. 162 for a K20A, mad decent. He said we could have made... Uh, he said we could have made some more if we didn't have the Groupium and we had a velocity stack, obviously. But uh, I think the Groupium is definitely the uh, daily driver's choice, the best daily driver intake. You know, it's not the V2, it's not a short ram, it's a stock box design, K and N, uh, you know, high flow filter. It, it does a good job. And this whole car is a. Uh, I mean, for the lack of a better term, it's a DC5R. I know it's left-hand drive. It's still got the sunroof, and it's not, you know, it's not right-hand drive. 
but uh got the uh wheel and tire set up you got the uh dc5r 17 inch type r wheels i'm rocking some uh kinda kaiser kr 20 a's right now the 300 tread wear in this spec not doing very good in the winter <laughs> but then uh Brembo's, you know, you see people with Brembo swaps and stuff like that on these cars, but this is the uh, the full conversion from the uh, from the DC5R, which means you got the Brembo's, you got the rotors and hubs, you got the, the uh, axles, you got the uh, the aluminum lower control arms, you got the trailing arms, you got the sway bars and everything. I've got all of that. This whole front clip was off a of championship white 0204 in Japan. Got that uh, imported and prepped and painted to match the car. The whole front clip was together though, so that's why it, it just fits so good. Mind my uh, my sweet rock chip there. I got two rock chips. I'm gonna need to repaint this lip. And then uh, something new here. These are actually power folding mirrors and they are, uh, I just did a series on that, uh, spoon glass, swapped it in. I didn't stick this on. If you look at the, uh, the fitment, it looks like an OEM mirror. These are the power folding mirrors. You come around the back. Everything on this car, except for right hand drive and the roof is type R spec. Mind, it's uh, I washed it yesterday, but you know, gets a little dirty driving. <laughs> and the interior, it's sort of OEM spec. The uh, these are custom, same insert material you would get with a DC5R panel. It's the exact same material as the uh, seat insert. And I got a roll of this stuff from Australia from Retro Auto Tech, and these are like OEM plus. My upholstery guy did the uh, little pocket there. And then uh, obviously Recaro SR4s. These have seen better days. Um, you know, they get worn out very quickly. They get dirty very quickly. It's, it's such a shame, you know, they're comfy seats. Uh, these ones I got from, uh, from DC5R Parts. I, I'm not gonna say I'm happy with them, Look at all this play this seat came with. Like the, the bushings are just like worn out down here and this. So I'm gonna have to get this seat repaired and you know, bushing swapped out, get them cleaned up a little bit more, maybe reupholstered, I don't know. Cause if you compare them to the uh, custom seats I got in the back, I mean, these are the, these are the bee's knees. That's fresh, same o OEM, uh, NOS uh, Recaro insert material with custom uh, custom color matched. Uh, I think this is Corvette red, or uh, I, I got the number. I'll, I'll try to find the actual suede color that is. But I mean, these are just clean. I, I think <laughs> I think only one person's ever sat in them other than me. I think it was Honda Vlog's girlfriend when we did the meetup. Then uh, obviously. Uh, you know, steering wheel setup, Spoon Sports Momo wheel with the uh, the Works Bell hub, stock uh, gauge cluster. I'm not in the. Uh, that's one thing I don't really care about. You know, oh, get the Type R cluster. It's in kilometers. It makes life harder. Uh, power folding mirror switch, JDM coin holder. I got this from uh, Raul at Checkered Sports. Uh, not really my taste, but I figured I'd rock it. You know. <laughs> I like the coin holder, it's not the uh, the Hydra Dip. AEM Wideband. Uh, any of you guys that are rocking Bosch sensors in these, you know, the one that calls for it, um, that sensor sucks so bad, I gotta say. I've gone through three of them, it's garbage. Then obviously the uh, Creme de la Creme, the uh, K-tuned uh, shifter. I actually polished this when I first got it, you know, wet sanded it, got some of the casting marks out and stuff. and. Uh, I need to repolish it probably, but you know, function over form. Pioneer double din, uh, K Tune Race Spec Shifter cables, my little, you know, MacGyver uh, center console cut mod so I could see my shifter. True story, uh, Type R door kick plates. 
And uh I'm trying to think of anything else, honestly. That's pretty much that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I kinda it's cold out right now, so I kinda rambled through a lot of that. I'll put a I'll put a uh, you know a uh, parts list in it. But I think for the most part that's that's summing up everything, you know, engine, transmission, uh, drivetrain setup, interior, exterior. Just trying to keep it a little quick for you guys so you don't gotta just pretend you're out here with me. We're freezing. It's cold. <laughs> but thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it. All you new subscribers, I appreciate the support. Um, if you want to grab some merch, shadesway.com, pick you up a uh, Dead Spirits hoodie, a hat, sticker. Anything helps. Supports the channel. Think the uh, the next big purchase purchase is Rega Masters and some uh, new Fortune Auto 510 series coilovers. They just dropped the uh, 500 series and the 510. So if you're on a budget, you can go with the 500s. If you're a big boy, you got uh, big money bags, you could uh, get the 510s with some uh, you know Swiss springs and custom it out and all that shit. But I guess uh, I'll leave you guys with some driving clips. You know, you see all this stuff. How does it drive? Let's check it out. All right, man, we're here. It's cold. Fuel pump, uh, fuel pump's not too loud. In you know, my honest opinion, it's not too bad. It's not like a Bosch 44 or something like that, you know what I mean? Oh, another thing I forgot to add uh, for the interior, custom carpet. Um, the guy that uh, made the seats, the upholster shop I used to work at, seats are phenomenal. That guy knows his shit. The person that made this carpet and the manager um, was a nightmare with this. Uh, I'm definitely going to be switching over to an actual uh, uh, DC 5R red carpet. Um, only problem with that is, you know, it's right hand drive, so you got to switch a couple things the gas door lever, the dead rest, and it, I think it'll be worth it though. But I'm not really too worried about that at this point. Um, I'm more about the function of the car, you know. What I got is, is a okay, and as, as you can hear, maybe uh, a few little rattles here and there. This uh, thermostat control. In the winter time it rattles like a bitch. Um, a pillars, custom, custom painted A pillars, so they're black to match the dashboard and the door panels. But enough gabbing. Um, you know, if you if you haven't seen this car, uh, you could you could go back and watch the other review video. But uh, you know, most of it's the same, but we got a couple additions, spoon mirrors, you know, cars tuned, uh, mega power R exhaust, fuel system. Let's get it. silly questions like hey can I run a 255 pump and then uh you know not get tuned it's like dude why I think I want to switch the uh I think I want to switch the CMC I I think the CMC, I had it on the silver car, and I'm not trusting this K-Tune CMC because I never miss shifts, and I swear, lately, I've been missing shifts, and it's always like third gear. It's either the shifter or the CMC or the slave, and, you know, as you guys heard, that didn't sound too good. Chipping some... 
some uh, shipments of flywheels in, you know? <laughs> shipments of gears. But yeah, you know, it is what it is. Um, I think if I were gonna upgrade the uh, the CMC or you know the drivetrain components for why that might be happening, I definitely will be going to uh, probably an acuity shifter. Honestly, uh, hybrid race, and I've heard good things about it, but the acuity one looks like it's the bee's knees. If it's anything like that TPS I have, the acuity uh, hall effect TPS. I really stand by that company. Um, I wish they'd send me a, a shifter so I could review it and compare it to the K Tune. But you know, I'm a little guy. I'm not. Uh, I'm not DC Five R parts or hobby vibes. <laughs> it is what it is, though. You try to you try to stay humble and uh, you know take your licks like a man. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> They can send shifters to whoever they want to, but it is what it is. I feel like I would give it a, a completely honest review as opposed to a paid promotion. True story. But yeah, getting it tuned, you know, it, it had some issues with the set idle screw and stuff. And basically, I thought I was having uh, coil pack issues or spark plug issues or something like that. If you have, if you delete your idle air control valve like I have, Basically, if you have the set idle screw too high, like let's say you have it at like 11 or 1200, uh, that's too high. It's way too high. Like when you start the car up, I'd say your uh, set idle screw adjusted properly, your RPMs on initial crank that car on cold engine, probably about 620, 650, somewhere in that area. Because my tuner, geez, buddy, tr don't tread on you. How the fuck is that possible? You're fucking slamming on your brakes. But uh, he adjusted it, and you know the the ignition was having some issues because it was getting too much airflow, and uh, it was making the ignition timing on idle get stuck, which is not the case. You don't want that. Winter time, you know, because nice cold air, it's good for the car, you know, in a sense, it's thinner air, or it's more dense air, whatever it is. But it sucks for the tires, you know? Like, you want cold temps, but you don't want, like, winter cold temps because it's denser air, it burns more fuel. I guess it is what it is. But um, it's really the traction I hate about it, you know, the winter time. You're on some R compounds, like, I man, it doesn't matter what tire you're on. I guess if you were on some winter tires, you'd be better off, but, you know, no traction. No traction at all. No traction. Because these tires are still brand new. Like, I got these right before winter hit, like, you know, probably back in uh, August, I think. And I really don't drive this car like, you know, you would think. You would think I'm putting tons of miles on this car. I bought this car with uh, uh, 130, it was either 132 or 134,000 uh, miles on the chassis. Uh, we, we're at 140, 664, so, you know, I've, I've put in less than 10K miles on this car, and, you know, I haven't even had it like three years. It's my fun car, you know? If I was going on some crazy road trip or something, I, I probably wouldn't bring this car just for peace of mind. A lot of money in this car. God. I think I need a rack slider too. I think uh, I've done I've done the. Uh, that's another thing I forgot too. <laughs> uh, on the suspension side, uh, we've got hard race. Uh, DC 5R spec ball joints. We've got hard race uh, tie rod ends. We've got stock tie rods. The tie rods are fine. Um, and then uh, I think, you know, I've got the car aligned. Cars aligned fine and everything. But um, 
I think I need a new rack slider. Probably gonna grab me an SHG one. since 2005 in high school. Either 2005 or 2006. I had it for 14 years. 14 years with the car, guys, is a very long time. Seriously. But it is what it is. I love this car way more than I love that other one. That other one was, you know, neglected. For the majority of its life, I didn't even mod it. I just drove it like a, literally like a daily. I feel like that'd be a good thing to get for another daily is just get another RSX and just not care about it. But I don't think that's in my DNA. <laughs> my DC5 DNA. Jesus Christ, dude. Just ride your fucking slam those brakes with your Mazda 3. God damn. Yeah, the gearing in this car for daily gets gets... You gotta get used to it, you know? A lot of riding around in six gear, not gonna lie. But if you're if you're getting on it, it's completely worth it. But like in traffic and you know, going the speed limit and stuff, like right now we're in fourth going 2,000 RPMs at 25, you know? So the gearing is a little odd, but it's for spirited driving, it's well worth it. And as far as, uh, as far as like if you want to know like what my VTAC engagement is, it's uh it's 40 4150 or 4250. I'll have to check that. I think it's 4250. And like Matt did such a killer job on tuning this car. Like he knocked it out in about three hours, I think. Did about, I don't know, maybe a hundred pulls. <laughs> but he took his time with it, took a you know, went over it with a fine-tooth comb and I'll be excited to take the four piston motor uh, to him probably next year. Any of you guys that are wondering what I mean by that, hey now, let's uh, get in second gear and get the fuck on. Uh, the plans for this car, like obviously I was saying about Rega Masters and you know Fortune Auto Coilovers, the big picture plan is uh, I am going to want another daily eventually and I'm going to take this K20A out of this car. And I'm going to put it in either an EG hatch, an EK hatch, a CRX, or a Del Sol. Probably one of those four choices. Or an S2000. 
Imagine we hit the lottery, I can case swap an S2000, that'd be pretty badass. That'd be a really uncomfortable daily though. I'm 6'2". But, um, the, the motor that will be replacing that, this in here, will be the, uh, the four piston uh, 2.5 liter, making uh, 360 wheel horsepower on street bolt-ons. So imagine what that fucker's gonna make on some Kinsler's and an open uh, Myers Competition header. That thing's gonna be a fucking beast. Probably make it more like, I don't know, 400? And that's on 93 fuel. <laughs> imagine what I'll make on M1. It'll be a ripper, nonetheless. And obviously, like, you probably, you know, all you race car people will be like, bro, why would you put a four piston in a DC5? Like, put it in the EG, it's lighter. It's like, dude, I'm not a professional racer. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to win some races and, like, you know, take some, you know, some trophies and stuff. But, like, dude, I think that's the most invigorating thing, the most enthusiastic thing is, like, you take a chassis that's not popular and try to be in the top 10 that's completely with the dc5 that's completely achievable with the egs and the uh, the the ek hatches and the crx's and the dc2's like dude there are thousands of people with fast ek's and eg's there's no way i mean it's still achievable but like dude trying to get to the top 10 versus like you know you might break in the top 100 if you're real fast beeping and vacuums and whatever the fuck's going on but yeah those are the plans uh i'd say those are the plans for the majority of the plans for the car am i gonna take this car off the street um i'll probably still have it registered when i had the four piston motor so i can i can you know i can have my bragging rights and say this is a this is a turnkey race car daily driver you know it's still it'll still be daily drivable with a good tune, it'll be dailyable on days that are sunny and not raining. Because with Kinsler's, you're not fucking driving in the rain. That shit's not happening. Um, or you get a surge box or something, you know, something to help you out with that. But I probably not. Uh, you know, if it's if it's a rainy day, we'll take the K20A EG or Del Sol. Probably not. I, Del Sol with the Target Top thing, like I just. Uh, I can't get into that. It's the Targa seals leak. This car leaks enough as it is. Having a Targa top that leaks ugh, does not sound like a good thing. Definitely does not sound like a good thing. Some of my favorite things about this car, about my setup, is uh, inside the cockpit. I mean, obviously, you know, you like the you like the engine, you like the fast and stuff like that. This steering wheel and this hub and this seat and this shifter is like the ultimate driving aphrodisiac you know like that's where that's where the car boner is like you're planted in the seat you got this fucking sexy ass steering wheel feels super good super responsive and you got this you know not sloppy shifter compared to stock like oh my god it's amazing it's fucking amazing true story i'd say those are my top three top three things that i just love about the you know the driving experience of this car and then the gearing and the motor but you know hello how are you doing today pretty good how about you i'm doing all right you changed our little thingy you changed your little thingy now this is annoying it doesn't work as good there we go there we go <laughs> you're, th you? your thing's a little mix matched Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do you say car almost? 70s music, 80s music. <laughs> Winning. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. All right, we got the rocket fuel. Let's get one more good pull in for y'all. All right, there's my opening. Um, you can chirp up to fourth, which is all right. 
I fucks with it. treated me good today guys yeah that fucking thermostat control rattling like listen how quiet it can get I hold it oh yeah let go of it rattly fucking vibrating its guts out I see mr. Subaru over there he wants to get fucking clapped you think your horizontal fucking radiator is gonna fucking your inner core is gonna help you out but oh mr. Subaru number two Got a black one and a blue one. You know, I don't got anything against the 2.5 Impreza RSs. I think those are actually pretty legendary. I think any <laughs> any car that was on initial D is pretty much at this point legendary. Fucking S2000, GTR, Evo, uh, you know, the AE86, the fucking Suzuki Cappuccino, the EG hatch, right? All those cars to me are legendary. And the 2.5 RS was a car that was on there. And I think that car is legendary too. But like the newer STIs and stuff, I don't fuck with them. Honestly, like, yeah, makes 300 horsepower. But it's like, dude, if I had a turbo on my car, I'd be fucking making 300 horsepower too. I'd be making 300 horsepower on eight pounds. Like, what is that? Because you got to think like, stock production cars that are turbo like they ain't making no fucking 300 horsepower on eight pounds the fucking uh the fucking uh whatchamacallit the uh, new fk type r that thing makes 306 at the crank on 23.2 pounds of boost that is dog shit it i mean when you you're spending 40 grand 40 grand on a production car because it's 300 horsepower and some kid with a fucking DC2 and a B20 VTEC turbo setup, an eBay turbo setup, can make, you know, 320 horsepower on like 8 to 10 pounds. Uh, I'm and that's wheel horsepower, too. That ain't crank horsepower. That's wheel horsepower. So that shit's making like 340 to 350 on the crank. Like, I just don't get that shit. Like, why... I guess it's for rich people. Rich people are like, I like cars that look like Subarus, but they're Hondas. It look like it's a fucking shark. Not a bad looking car, but like, I don't know. I look at that car and I'm like, that is not a Honda. It's not a bad car. Just not a Honda. It doesn't have that Honda, Honda spirit and Honda heritage, you know? Like, let's say like the 20th anniversary uh, Honda S2000. That th they did that thing up right. Shit, I'd even say the uh, the retro uh, EK9, uh, you know, they, they released the uh, the 20th anniversary S2000 and then that EK9 throwback. They kept the body style and the chassis of the EK9 fucking super proper. They put 20 inch wheels on it and they put a bunch of Honda fucking goddamn Toyota Prius looking shit on the inside. Like, not really a fan of all of that, but you know. The chassis itself, like, they did it good. If anyone's curious about the, the two-step. That's what it sounds like. Uh -huh. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much, uh, you know, summing up the walk around, you know, updated. You know, some of you guys have seen the other ones. A couple new items, but uh, thought I'd do a, a new one for all the new subscribers and, you know, showing the updates on the car much more to come i mean we're it's the winter it's the off season so hasn't been a lot of content from me on this car because it's the fucking winter you know that's all it comes down to it's the winter like what am i supposed to do you know i think uh i washed the car yesterday that's the first time i've washed the car all month i usually wash my car three times a week but that ain't happening you know it's cold as fuck um but thanks for watching Hope you enjoyed the drive along, the ride along, the chat, the chit chat, the powwow. Um, 
If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do that. That would make me uh, happy to a degree. I mean, I don't really care if you do or don't, but you know, it's crazy to think that over 90% of the people that watch this channel don't hit subscribe. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, 10% of y'all are homies and 90% of y'all that watch don't even care to fucking hit subscribe to help me out, you know? We just hit 700 subs, we need 300 more to start making a little bit of pennies off this channel. Um, is what it is, I don't expect any money to really come of it, but it'd be awesome if it did help pay for the new channel. Uh, I have a new channel I just uh, came out with. Uh, it's it's featured, I'll drop my link down in the description of all my channels and stuff. I got a gaming channel, got a new computer build tech channel, and this channel. Um, we're, we're building a Spoon Sports themed uh, custom PC. So be on the lookout for that. You might enjoy that. I'll post a video of it on this channel. But if you want to watch the, the build on the other channel and check out some of the parts and stuff, it's going to be proper. Anyways, enough talking. Thanks for watching, guys. Y'all have a good night, good weekend. Stay safe. Be motherfucking y'all.